Hi everyone, welcome to the first lecture of INSC 6630. Uh, the topic of this course is Bitcoin and blockchain technology. And my name is uh, Jeremy Clark. I'm a professor in CIISE at Concordia University in Montreal. And if you want to find the course website uh, to go along with this, uh, you can just Google my name. Uh, the URL for my website is a little long, so it's easy just to Google me. I should come up on one of the first hits. And uh, if you find your, yourself on my website, you can click Courses, uh, and then you'll see that INSC 6630 uh, is, is at the top of the website, and all the details about the assignments and uh, the course outline and all of those types of things are uh, available on the website. I'm not going to go through them now in, in today's lecture. I went through them in person uh, in the first lecture. So if you missed that, come come and talk to me. So this course is, is maybe a little interesting because it's the first online course that we've offered in our department. Uh, so it's going to be a bit of an experiment. This is a course that I developed last year. So I have taught this course in person. Uh, this will be the first year that it's taught online. Uh, as you can already sort of get a, a flavor for, um, the course itself will be uh, basically comprised of handwritten notes. Uh, so the, the main difference is instead of me writing in person in class, you're going to see it uh, on your screens. Uh, and I can go through some detail of, of why I do it. I, I won't bore you with the details, but I find that this style of teaching, um, it really forces me to slow down. And if I can't you know, draw it out, it's probably too complicated for you to understand. And so it really forces me to simplify the material as well and, and focus in on uh, the most important uh, material. Okay, so what's this course about? So this course is on Bitcoin and blockchain, as mentioned. Um, so maybe these two terms don't mean anything to you. So let's just sort of summarize what exactly they are. Um, so the way that we can comprise or think about start thinking about this course is um, think about some of the technology that's used in the world today. Uh, there's a bunch of technology that's used in a sector that we call finance. And then, of course, the vast majority of technology that we use is, is in non-finance. OK, so what what are the kinds of things that we think about in finance? If you were to go over to the business school and take a, a course in, in finance, what are, are the types of topics that you would talk about? So one of them uh, that will be a big component of this class um, is currency. Money. Why is it worth something? Where does it come from? That type of thing. Uh, I will give you some background on that uh, later on in, in this lecture series in this course. OK. Then there's a bunch of other things that you might think of. You might think of stocks and derivatives and bonds and the world that we call securities. You might think of insurance, prudentials. Um, that's another big area. Um, there's banks, uh, how banks operate, how they're able to grow the supply of, of certain types of money. Uh, that type of thing. The central bank is, is tied to currency as well, so it sort of overlaps uh, with banks. Now, Bitcoin, you've probably heard about it in the news if, if you're not familiar with it. Uh, it's a currency, okay? So Bitcoin is this uh, technology that was developed to be a currency. That was its original purpose. We'll critique uh, a little later in the course whether it's fulfilling what we'd want from a currency, but it was certainly designed to be a currency uh, initially. And inside of Bitcoin, there's a kind of novel contribution. Uh, it's called blockchain technology, uh, which you may have also heard about. And it's kind of like the protocol that Bitcoin runs on top of. Um, there's different names for what this protocol is. Some people think of it as a data structure. Some people think of it as a consensus mechanism. Um, it's, it's, to be honest, it's both of those things. Uh, the details of it is, is what we'll, we'll spend, you know, the first couple of lectures of this course uh, detailing. But for now, you can just think of it as sort of the gears that uh, are inside of Bitcoin that, that make Bitcoin work. 
And what we've seen recently is we've seen a lot of interest in, can we take, maybe not Bitcoin per se, but can we take this blockchain technology that's inside of Bitcoin? Uh, can we take it out of Bitcoin and can we use it to do other things inside of finance? So can we use it for securities? Can we use it for insurance? Uh, what would banks look like uh, if, if there were uh, blockchain technology sort of running in the background? What, what would that mean for, for banks? Um, so these are uh, what we call this whole space, this whole application of blockchain technologies to things other than currency we call fintech or financial technology. So in this course, we're going to focus a lot on Bitcoin. Uh, so you can think of the course as, as kind of roughly developed, divided into thirds. Uh, the first third of the course will be on Bitcoin and necessarily on the blockchain technology that's inside of it. Then we're going to look at a slightly different uh, blockchain technology that's meant to be more general. It's not meant to be a currency. It's meant to be a generic blockchain that you can use for whatever applications you want. Uh, it's called Ethereum. And then for the final third of the course, uh, we'll look at financial technology. So what are some of the ways that we could use Ethereum or Bitcoin itself or other different blockchain technologies uh, in the world of securities, in the world of insurance, in the world of banks? Uh, we'll also consider non-finance um, applications as well. So there's numerous ones uh, in this space. I'll, I'll just identify a few that, that people um, have talked a lot about. So one of them is identities. Uh, can you manage identities using blockchain technology? Um, in particular, one component of your identity might be the keys, the cryptographic keys that you're using in terms of this blockchain technology. That whole space is called PKI, uh, and we'll, we'll circle back to that later. Um, there's also interest in all sorts of things. So supply chain is, is one that um, a lot of people bring up, and it might be something that you have background in if, if you're coming uh, through our academic program and you're taking quality engineering, then uh, you deal a lot with a lot of supply chain issues. There's other things that are a little more far flung, just to name one, IoT is, is mentioned a lot. Um, and we'll be a little bit skeptical as we go through this course about whether blockchain can or uh, can actually solve uh, particular problems in this space if it actually makes a novel contribution. But in terms of just interest uh, from companies and tech firms and things like that, these are, are definitely things that, that people are interested in. Okay. All right, so just to kind of summarize what I said in terms of the contents of the course, um, you can think of it as uh, sort of part one will be on Bitcoin and blockchain. And specifically, what we'll do is we'll go through some of the details starting starting with this lecture of some of the cryptographic uh, primitives that underlie uh, Bitcoin or blockchain technologies. And I'm going to teach these assuming that you've never taken a crypto course. I'll assume that you are sort of comfortable with computer science and computer science terms, um, but have maybe never looked specifically at cryptography. Uh, the two cryptographic primitives we need are Called a, what's called a hash function and what's called a signature. Uh, from there, we're going to build up some more involved data structures. Uh, so just to give you a flavor, this isn't comprehensive, but we'll look at, some, we'll look at something called uh, link time stamping. Uh, we'll look at Merkle trees. We'll look at something called proof of work. Uh, we'll also look at uh, what it means to form a consensus. Uh, so we'll, we'll touch on something called Byzantine fault tolerance. And these are kind of the ingredients that go into uh, the blockchain. So once we go through all this material, we'll put it together uh, and then you'll see the, the blockchain technology itself. And once we have a blockchain technology, then uh, we'll look at how we build a currency on top of a blockchain technology. And that's essentially what Bitcoin is. And this is something that I'll be mentioning later as well, uh, but it, you know, it, it bears repeating. Um, you can't really think of blockchain as completely separate from Bitcoin uh, or from currency in general. As, as you'll see, the way that a blockchain works 
uh, depends on there being a currency with it. So they're not they're not different modules. It's not like you could have the blockchain module and then you build a currency on top necessarily. Um, the currency is actually an integral part to how the blockchain works and how you get the security properties that you want out of the blockchain. Okay, so this is Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is a blockchain-based technology. Blockchain didn't exist before Bitcoin. So it's a novel contribution of Bitcoin. But these primitives that blockchains do use, uh, those did exist uh, prior to Bitcoin. And Bitcoin is designed to be a currency. Uh, so it's supposed to be like money. Uh, now, as we've seen, people are interested in applying it to other types of solution. And so what Bitcoin has is they actually have a, a kind of programming language where you can program uh, you can program Bitcoin to do things that are, are more versatile than just being a currency. Uh, these are sometimes called smart contracts. But Bitcoin is very restricted in this language. There's not a lot you can do. Um, so one project uh, that's interesting and, and now has a lot of, uh, there's a lot of academic papers and research in the area uh, is a project called Ethereum. And Ethereum is a blockchain that gives you um, the ability to program using the blockchain as the underlying technology, you can program new op applications. And it just gives you a programming language. So it's up to you to come up with what that application is and then code it up and make sure that it works correctly. Um, so that's the one that we're going to use uh, for the course for this course. There are other competing technologies. Uh, you can push Bitcoin very, very far um, as well. So some people are interested in that. Um, when you go out into industry and talk to people, uh, because Ethereum sort of this open protocol that runs across the Internet, um, some people are interested in more proprietary uh, blockchain technologies. So Hyperledger is one example of, of something that's in that space. Uh, Corda from R3 would be another. Um, so there are alternatives to Ethereum, but Ethereum's kind of the best developed. Uh, there's there's lots of good development tools for it. Um, because it's open, you can just go ahead and use it right away. There's a test network, and there's a bunch of perks to using Ethereum uh, in the in this in a course for actually teaching how this works. Okay, so we'll look at Ethereum. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at uh, a programming language. Uh, that we use. It's called Solidity. It's the main programming language for writing up uh, decentralized apps or smart contracts that, that run on top of Ethereum. Okay, and then we'll look at um, the Ethereum network itself. The final part of this course will be concerned with financial technology or fintech. Um, so in this space, what we're going to do is we'll, we'll go back to Bitcoin and we'll stop thinking necessarily at the technological level and we'll start thinking about what, what's the kind of hole in society that it's trying to fill. Um, and so the, the, the thing that's trying to be is a currency or, or we can think about it as money. Turns out that Bitcoin's not that successful at fulfilling what we would want uh, from a currency system. And so we'll talk about why. why. What is it that we actually want from money? Uh, what is it that Bitcoin gives us? Where does money come from? Why does why is money valuable? You know, why is one piece of paper that's um, printed by your government uh, that says it's worth one dollar? Why is that actually worth one dollar? And what happens when it's worth less than a dollar? Is there ever scenarios like that, or it's worth more than a dollar? Um, all of your sort of finance questions, I'll try and answer. And uh, then we'll look at some different applications of blockchain technologies. Uh, so you can think of them as Ethereum apps that you might write that are going to improve uh, some of the, the behind the scenes uh, aspects of the financial in industry. Um, so we'll look at things like uh, order books, uh, solvency proofs, um, uh, payments uh, between banks, interbank inter settlement, and there's, there's a couple of other applications. Okay, so that's essentially the course in a nutshell. Um, so next lecture, or next little sub-lecture, what we'll do is we'll, we'll jump into the crypto and, and that's where we're going to start off.